If your goal is to be a faster cuber, how much does it help to just pick up a cube and do this? And then start timing it for fun. So what I'm actually trying to improve on is regular solves, and this is slightly related, but specifically what I'm doing here is something I would never have to do normally. It also takes away from practicing more important things, and it also tires me out so I would perform worse. When you think about it that way, it might sound kind of dumb, but what I really just described to you is going to the gym to get better at sports. So you don't have to do things that are technically useless like this. What you can do instead is just the algorithms you would normally use during your solves. And when you practice these, you don't want to just go at your normal speed. You want to go faster than you think you can. For example, if I want to do a J perm with a guarantee I don't mess up, it would look something like this. But if I want to go faster than that and improve my potential speed, then it would look something like this. Notice how much I'm messing up because I'm going faster than what I can control. And you can make it more fun by getting your timer and trying to set PBs to see if you're actually improving. Or if you want a tool to help you keep track of these, you can use jprim.net as your algorithm trainer. Next is finger tricks. So if you're starting out, you want to make sure you have finger tricks for the most basic situations. For example, for this sequence, you would always do it like this. And for the reverse sequence, you would always start here and do it like this. For sledgehammer, you would do it like this and end with your thumb. And anytime you see these situations in algorithms, you would always just do it that way and make sure that you don't end up with bad habits such as this. It should be this. But as you get faster, you want to use a greater variety of finger tricks so that you don't have to change how your hand grips the cube all the time. And that's called a regrip, which isn't all that slow, but if you know what you're going to do next, then having to regrip before you do it can be really slow. So if you just do a regrip right now, I guarantee you, you cannot do that as fast as just doing R. That's because for a regrip, I dodge these corner pieces, and for R, I don't. So most of the time, regripping is worse than adding one move. So here I've done T-perm with a regrip and T-perm without a regrip, and you'll notice that the one without a regrip actually gets more than one move in before the one with the regrip even begins. But something you'll also notice is that near the end of the algorithm, I regripped again for both of them. And this regrip is actually okay because I'm doing a U prime move as I do the regrip. So it's in this situation where a regrip isn't bad because I can do it while doing another move. And just to finish off the comparison, these are both regripless T perms to start, but one of them avoids the final regrip as well. As you can see, neither one really has an advantage because I'm not saving any time by eliminating that regrip. So if you want to learn all the finger tricks you need to do this, such as what I did in the beginning of the T-perm, then you can check that out in the finger tricks video. But here, I'm just going to show you all the finger tricks that people tend to be too lazy to learn. So first is this one that I talked about. This happens when your thumb is on top. And instead of doing this, you can also replace it with this, which is pretty much just as good and can be done in any hand position because you're using the other hand. Also, being able to do either of these for U prime is great as well. And then there's D2 with ring pinky or pinky ring. And then of course you should know how to do ring finger D or D prime, but you should also be able to go in the opposite direction, which is really important. So our first example is this E perm. Just kidding, don't use this algorithm. I know a lot of people who do use it, and if you use it, you're just being lazy. The reason anyone uses this E perm is because you only have to do the regular D move and not the reverse kind. But if you use the regular E perm and just learn how to do that in reverse, then you can do it really fast. Next is this OLL, and I told you earlier that if you're more of a beginner, then this sequence in the middle, you would always do it like this. But that's not going to be true for this OLL anymore, because if you try and go through the whole algorithm without regripping, then you'd end up being in this position as you get to those moves. And as you can see, I'd have to regrip to get thumbs on front to do that same trigger again. So instead, from here, you'd have to do this as your only possible way of doing U. And then the rest of it goes like that, and then F prime here like this. And notice that this way of doing F prime is really just the way of doing U prime I showed earlier like this. Next is A perm from this angle specifically. So of course, being able to do the D2 flicks. And then at the end here, instead of regripping to do U prime because I need my left hand for U prime usually, here I could do this move and that saves me another regrip. Or I could do it like this, which is what I prefer. Also, the special way of doing U or U prime is really, really important for F2L. So this pair, inserting with L prime, U prime, L. Oh, I regripped. Instead, anything front slot related should always start with thumbs on front. Then I can do it like this. 
This is one of those things that a lot of people are not comfortable with at first, but trust me, all the pros are doing it, just learn it. Another thing that can make you faster and more consistent is learning algorithms mainly on one hand. A lot of people will learn these two cases as the same case, one is just right-handed and one is just left-handed. If you're just learning this, I would say that's fine because you're learning two algorithms for the price of one. However, once you've learned a lot of the important algorithms like all of OLL and PLL, then you should start thinking about changing them all to be one hand, most likely your right hand. And so this one would still be the same, but then this one would go like this. Now this isn't true for every case and you can see how often I do this in my OLL and PLL videos. Now the main reason why you wanna think about this is that one of your hands will be often the one regripping while the other one stays in this exact grip. So just regripping one hand is less prone to mistakes and having to switch from a right-handed algorithm to a regripped left-handed algorithm is much worse. And I know a lot of people don't prefer to practice their algorithms in favor of more important things like look ahead and efficiency. While those are of course necessary, it's always important to keep pushing your turn speed as well. If you don't have much time to practice and you just wanna solve, that's totally fine. But come on, just give it a try. How fast can you do a J perm?